Okay, we will start as soon as I know that Ziggy, who's on in the background, can hear me. No, that's a different mute. Uh, yeah, Ziggy, can you hear me? And I can't see you, by the way, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy? Are you sure you're not muted? Is he nodding or anything? No, it's... <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I'm Okay, so thank you all for coming. Um, before we start, Mark's going to do some health and safety pieces um, to tell you about how to get out if there's a fire and things like that. So I'll hand over to Mark um, and then I'll take back over and hopefully by then Ziggy will be with us again. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mark Walsh. I am Senior Production Coordinator for MOSFEST. Um, just a few bits of health and safety things before we start. Um, first thing is that we are recording tonight, um, so if you don't want to be filmed, if you want to sit further back on the sofas of the chairs, and then your head and your face will appear. Um, the second is toilets. If you just go outside the main doors and to your right is the women's, and down one flight of stairs is the men's at the same location. And if you hear the fire alarm, it'll be pretty obvious it's very loud and alarmy. Um, you will be able to go through the main doors again, is your main fire exit, and you just head down and head straight down the stairs. So cheers, thanks so much for coming. Okay, Mark, you probably don't want to sit down. Um, so, yeah, Ziggy's just reconnecting. Um, uh, if people don't know who Ziggy is, we will come to Ziggy in just a minute. Um, for now. So, a bit of a welcome about Mozilla. Um, we are Mozilla, welcome. Um, many of you are within the circle of Mozilla anyway, so you know who we are. Um, we're an open online organization. Um, we're champions of the internet, um, so we're pushing a diverse and open web. Um, as part of that, we enact what we call our participa participation guidelines. Now, all of you here tonight in an event run by Mozilla, I ask that you do follow our participation guidelines. Um, it can be somewhat summarized as be respectful. It's a little quote up there and there's full link to the text, um, but really it, it can just be summarized as be respectful to one another. And if you have any concerns about how people are behaving, um, come and find myself or Ziggy or Robbie at the event. Uh, or if, if you don't feel comfortable talking to us, one of the production teams, so Mark or Sarah. So we'll come on and we'll talk a little bit about Mozilla Festival. Um, Mark's going to do that and then we'll talk about Mozilla Festival House. Cool. Yes, um, so this is MOSFEST's eighth year, I want to say. Ninth. Ninth. I should know this by now. Um, so yeah, it takes place at two venues now, from the 22nd until the 26th of October. It takes place at the Royal Society of Arts, which is based in Charing Cross. And then from the 26th to the 28th, it's held at Ravensbourne University, which is just um, next to the O2 Arena in North Greenwich. Um, so we are a festival that takes place um, every year in October, and we have, we are summarized on over here so you can see, um, by five different spaces which is decentralization, um, which is um, where you can explore different ideas and platforms around the decentralized web. Digital inclusion is all about making sure that everyone ha is welcome and feel like they have a space online. Openness is all about keeping the internet open and free for everyone to use. Privacy and security is about keeping you and your data online uh, safe. And then we have a USO, which is um, a zone dedicated to under 18s where they learn about this year's theme. Um, so this year's theme is data and you. Um, so we're exploring questions and concerns that we all have around privacy and data online. Um, so the questions we're asking is, it's hard to read off the script. Um, how is your personal data being used by companies you interact with on the web? What potential harms and risks does this create um, both in your life um, in person and also online? And what can or should you be able to control when it comes to your personal data? So we explore this theme in these different spaces and also three experiences, which is um, art and data, where we have three artists um, or a range of artists who are creating different pieces of art um, before and during the weekend um, based around our theme. 
Gaming Mods Fest, which is something new this year, which um, is a game that people can sign up to to play across the weekend where they can explore how their data is tracked. And Query Mods Fest, which is where we're focusing on data issues when it comes to the LGBT plus community. Um, and house. I could probably talk a bit more about the festival actually if we'll get back. Um, so yeah, the festival itself is over three days. We have over 350 sessions currently confirmed. Um, and when we say a session, it's not what you normally see at a conference. So um, normally you go to a conference, someone stands up on stage and talks to you, where we're all about participants being able to speak with the facilitators. Um, so a session could be anything from two people to 20 people, and they can sit around a table, discuss the different ideas in a different range of formats. So we have a learning forum where that's just people sitting around a table discussing ideas. Uh, the shed, which is where you get hands on using different tools, being able to make and craft things, and also gallery spaces where we have um, either installations or art pieces that people can explore and just freely look at in their own time. Um, we also have a space on the ground floor of Ravensbourne. Ravensbourne is a huge building. It's nine different levels, so that we take up the entire space. Um, and in the ground floor, we have our D&D &D space, uh, which is dialogues and debates. Um, we have 19 different speakers from all walks of life, all different parts of the um, online and offline community, um, discussing, again, different talks, different panels around the theme. Um, and yeah, there's incredible coffee, there's swag, there is lunches every day for you guys, there's food for you guys as well every day. And yeah, it's a fantastic event. It's so much fun. You can see, like, we have up to 1,800 people at the weekend, and it's just an incredible live atmosphere the entire time. So yeah, it's great fun. I'll hand over to Tom to talk about house. Yes, um, just a little bit more about MozFest while we're there. Um, something I want to mention is, as volunteers, I don't know, before we carry on on this lot of piece, um, how many of you been, have been to MozFest before? You raise your hand. And raise your hand, and lower your hand, sorry, if you were not a volunteer. Okay, so what we'll see is that there's about half of you were volunteers in previous years and half of you are completely new to volunteering at Mozilla Festival. And what I'd like to say is as a volunteer, we will talk a little bit about how much you're expected to give later on. Um, but you'll see here, even while you're volunteering, you're completely welcome to be part of the festival. You'll see around this picture, people in the red t-shirts. Um, all these people in red t-shirts were our volunteers last year. Um, we had much more than that, and most of them were in plain clothes. Um, but what you'll see is that everybody there is having a good time with the rest of the festival. So no matter whether you're on duty or off duty, you're always part of this amazing festival that we offer. Um, now, if we come on to MozFest House. So Mozilla Festival House is a week-long event just before the festival. Um, it's, it's a new addition from last year. So last year we, we did it for the first time. And what MozFest House is, is it's a space for events that um, extend onwards from Mozilla Festival. So it might be events that perhaps would want to run on their own but don't have the facilities or bandwidth to be able to do that without the support of something like Mozilla Festival. So it's um, a really good experience for the events um, because we offer a nice little free co-working space um, and we give them the high production value that they might not be able to achieve on their own. Um, we have 13 public events this year in the festival house at the moment. Um, there's plenty of private events as well that go on through the week. Um, and it's a smaller volunteer team than Mozilla Festival. So we'll be taking on about two or three volunteers each day um, on top of the team that we had last year. So it's a uh, nice new way to get involved with Mozilla Festival. It is in the week, it is in the daytime, um, there is some bits on the evenings as well, so we'll talk a little bit about the shifting of that later. Now, we'll talk a little bit about your key expectations as a volunteer, and if you came to my meetup last year, this slide will be very familiar with you, and so will most of the slides we go through with some minor changes. Um, now, what we ask from you is that we get four hours of volunteering from you um, as, as a minimum. Um, some people go on to do more, but I would ask that you don't do too much more because it is a really good time for you to um, explore the festival as well. 
As part of that, you'll get unrestricted access to the festival. Um, the house is a little bit different. You'll have to sign up for those events separately. Some of them are free, some of them are not. Um, we don't give a general ticket to be able to access the house events because they are separate events. Um, we'll feed you throughout the event. Nobody ever goes hungry at MozFest. I will make that my priority. And you'll meet a nice friendly community of volunteers. Um, there's some in this room, 26 of us in here. So far, there's about 88 people that we've spoken to and accepted to come to Mozilla Festival this year um, as, vol as volunteers. So it's a, a really nice way to get involved with Mozilla, especially if it's your first time coming with us. Um, and thank you to all of you that are coming to us for a second time. I can see plenty of you in the room. Um, and thank you to all of you coming to us for a first time. The volunteer coordinator team is Robbie. Robbie is based out of Dallas. Um, he works for an airline. Ziggy is um, based in Belgium. Ziggy will be joining us in a little bit um, from now, so I'm not going to introduce Ziggy too much because he can do that for himself. And I'm me. Um, so I'm Tom, um, and that's us. Um, Robbie, you won't get to meet Robbie until the week of the festival. He might join us via video for the next meetup, but his day job is a little bit prohibitive of um, being around on the UK evenings, being in the time zone he's in. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Ziggy. Um, Ziggy, Ziggy, are you around, Ziggy? Yes, I am. Hello, Tom. Hello. Can you see my... I'm just seeing myself, so... Looks like oh. I'll be talking to myself right now. <laughs> Um, okay, let me, I'll get you that back, but one sec. That's fine, that's fine. Are you looking at us now? Well, I'm, I'm still looking at the screen on myself, but uh, I'll take your word for it that there are plenty of people there, and I'm about just to talk to you. I guess, hello everyone. Um, I am super hyped that you were all able to join us here tonight. Um, I'd say that I'm seeing some familiar faces, but I can't, so uh, I hope there are some familiar faces. I hope there are some new ones. Um, I do apologize for not being there physically myself, uh, but I do hope to um, forgive me with this brief AV display. Um, so yeah, thanks for the introduction, Tom. My name is Ziggy. I am one of the three volunteer coordinators for the festival this year. We'll definitely be seeing each other a lot over the course of the weekend, so I'll try to keep it short tonight. I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting you, uh, since I can't probably see you tonight. Uh, but I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to catch up on the actual, uh, or during the actual festivals. Um, yeah, it's going to be another awesome year, and I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, um, I want to give you guys a brief overview of the roles uh, for volunteers this year. From what I think, nothing major has changed since last year. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put the roles or uh, descriptions of the roles on the wiki. I'm not sure if we have already. If we haven't, I'll make sure to do that by tonight. So you can also read through them um, uh, well, well, when you're up for it. First up is the AP tag role. I'm not sure if the presentation is coming through. I can't see that, is it? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So yeah, the uh, AV Tech role, volunteers who sign up for this one will pretty much be helping out with the general AV equipment on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, on Friday, obviously helping to get up, uh, helping get set up for the science fair during the evening. And then once that's done, uh, pretty much move all of the screens, all of the equipment, uh, move it all back throughout the entire venue uh, to make sure that it's ready for uh, the next day on Saturday. And then again, uh, on Sunday, uh, moved all again for the closing demo. Um, those three times I just mentioned are probably going to be the most busiest um, for this role. Because once everything is set up, um, we'll only need a couple of volunteers to help out with Dan at some generic AV sport. Dan is the master's AV god, uh, having done this for many years. Uh, Pretty much as long as I can remember. I'm not sure. Is, is Dan around this evening? Is he here? Hey, Ziggy. Oh, Dan is here. I, so awesome. Dan never actually. 
Dan didn't actually sign up for this evening, so there's a picture of Dan just here, um, because I, I didn't want to leave him out completely, um, but it, he just showed up earlier. Sorry, um, I've totally got my good side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so Dan's just over there. He's wearing sunglasses and a suit. Um, so hello, Dan, and Ziggy, carry on. Yeah. So yeah, you'll probably see a lot of Dan um, throughout the weekend as well if you sign up. Uh, well, if you sign up or you don't, you'll probably uh, see him anyway, just running around. Um, then secondly, um, there is the InfoGural. I think I've seen this, if I remember the slide correctly. Uh, yes. Basically, we have a whole bunch of information points just scattered throughout the venue, um, almost nearly on every floor. And we're looking for volunteers willing to soak in as much information as they can about a specific floor, about their specific floor, so that they can then relay this information to the public uh, and help out with generic uh, logistics in that area. Um, so, you know, you can expect questions like, hey, uh, what's going on with this floor? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to this session. I can't find it. Could you please help me find it? Uh, stuff like that. Um, We'll try to have two volunteers per desk, uh, since that allows uh, one uh, volunteer to roam around a bit on the actual floor, um, so that the other one can remain stationary at the um, desk. We don't want to make it too asocial, so don't worry about being isolated. That's why we have two person at the desk there. It's definitely going to be a rather social uh, role. Uh, the person staying at the desk will uh, be responsible for um, making sure the display, the schedule, is on the display router. Um, we'll set up the AV for you, um, and also for monitoring the radio, uh, which means that your info gurus are pretty much our eyes and ears around the venue, and you guys uh, will be relaying information uh, to us, to Moss Health, which I'll uh, talk about in a few moments, um, through the radio and other channels. So more info about radio usage later. Um, so yeah, that's the InfoGural, then there's the mascot team. This one is actually quite obvious, um, I'm not going to bother going in, uh, going on about it for too long, uh, but we're pretty much looking for um, two types of volunteers. Um, a volunteer, or some volunteers that write physiology to fit in the suit and be willing to take a short training course to how, how to properly use a fox. Um, you'd probably be, or you most um, be responsible for just going on a short, short walk uh, as Foxy to take some pictures with people, move around a little, uh, stuff like that. And then we'll need a bunch of volunteers willing to escort our brave mascots to make sure that he can actually, he or she can actually get to the place we're willing to go as quickly as and uh, efficiently as possible. Because it tends to get really hot in there. So even with proper cooling packs, uh, we try to minimize um, the amount of time anyone is in the costume. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we need uh, volunteers for the mascot team for. And there is the welcome team. Um, this one is definitely the most people-focused um, one of all the roles, since it involves well, welcoming people, checking our tickets, um, pointing them to the free swag that's available that comes with the ticket, and then giving them some initial pointers. We'll need a whole bunch of them on uh, Friday and Saturday, because uh, those will be the most busy days, uh, especially uh, Friday evening and Saturday uh, or afternoon, mostly. So yeah, then there's the mob help. Yes. They are very talented, and they are led by William, a.k.a. Fuzzy Fox. He's definitely there. I know that. I've heard him. Sorry. Hello, Fuzzy Fox. <laughs> um, he is a MossFest and, well, just plain Mozilla veteran, to be honest. Um, he'll be responsible for running the Moss Health team, where the info gurus try to gather specific information for their specific floors. They also be relaying it to Moss Help, uh, which they will collect the info and thus be pretty much in the loop of everything that happens everywhere. Um, they'll be scanning social media platforms, uh, promoting what's going on on the festival, 
providing digital assistance where needed uh, and stuff like that. I think just like every year they'll be located on the gigantic desk on the fourth floor or in front of the fourth library, that's, or if, if I can have that correctly. Um, but if you have any questions about the role, definitely talk to Fuzzy uh, Fox and um, he'll be able to give you some uh, some pointers if uh, this is the right role for you. And then last but not least, yes, the catering. Um, pretty much always all hands on deck when um, that's lunch hour on Saturday and Sunday. We're always looking for a couple of volunteers, a whole bunch of volunteers actually, just to make sure that the catering logistics um, go smoothly and that food is properly uh, spread over the different floors uh, when needed. Sounds pretty easy, but trust me, it tends to get quite chaotic when a lot of people uh, are hungry. Uh, yeah, we don't want that, so uh, we want a whole bunch of volunteers to help out during lunch hour. I uh, hope it uh, goes properly this year. So yeah, um, I guess please do sign up for the roles that you like. Let us know if you have any questions about them. Um, I am really looking forward um, to meeting and seeing all of you in person since I can't see you tonight. But I'd say um, I, I do wish you a very pleasant evening. Um, and I guess back over to you, Tom. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Ziggy. Bye. Bye, Ziggy. Bye. Okay, let me just get rid of Ziggy. <laughs> every year, Tom, every year. <laughs> we can't see you anymore. You, you don't need to. Okay, so Ziggy gave us a really good overview of the uh, roles that we're going to have this year. Um, a little note that I do want to add on based on a conversation I've had today is on the info gurus. Um, one of the other roles that we're going to perhaps separate out but maybe keep it in part of the info guru role is we're going to have on the uh, fourth floor a emergent session space. It's a nice little space for um, conversations that are not in sessions, but they've come off the back of sessions or conversations through the festival. So it's conversations that just want to book a table to sit down together and talk about something in a group, and other people can come along and join in those conversations. Um, so we'll be looking for some really organized people that are going to potentially help us out by um, manning, manning that little area. Um, and what they'll be doing is taking the bookings from people that want to use a table, um, pointing people in the right direction, and making sure that that little um, ad hoc area is operating smoothly. Um, I will include that in one of the emails, um, but it's likely to fall under the info guru role as one of the places that you might be allocated to. So those of you that came last year will know how we've done shifting in the past. Um, we're doing it a bit differently this year. So the way that we're doing it this year is a very simple three-step process. As part of your registration, you've already told us what days you're available. Um, if there's any changes to those, do give us a shout so we know what days um, you're likely to be available now. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you access to choose times and sessions that you don't want to be available. So perhaps there's um, a session that you want to go to. And what you'll do is you'll find those sessions and you'll select them and you'll say, OK, I don't want to go, I don't want to be on duty at this time. Um, and then what we're going to do from that is that we're going to assign you shifts. The problem we had last year with the way we took um, shifts from you where you signed up for shifts was that there were some shifts with way too many people and some shifts with not enough people. Um, and it's really hard to tune that. So what we're going to do this year is balance it out a bit more by allocating the shifts based on the time that you want to be available. So you tell us where you want to go and we'll tell you um, out of the time that's left over what we want you to do to help us out. Um, we'll give you some information on how we'll play that in a little while, um, in a, probably a week or so from now, um, but it's likely to be through an online portal where you'll be able to set that up yourself. And the last little thing I wanted to briefly cover was communications, and we'll go through a bit more information on communications, but there will be some information that you'll get shortly in the next few days. Um, this year we'll be using a combination of Slack, which is an instant messenger that you can have on your phone or a laptop or anything like that. Um, we'll also have Slack set up on all of the info desks. We'll have it set up everywhere that you could possibly be um, so that you can always get contact with um, other people. Most help will be on there and the coordination team will also be on there. so you can 
can always get assistance there. Um, we'll also have radios. Um, you won't be so silenced on the radios this year because we're on our own channel, um, which means that you can talk to us without bothering the whole of the festival team. Um, so you will, you will get a bit more opportunity to um, ask questions over the radio where needed, and that will be another primary communication channel this year. Um, the one thing that I'm going to probably send to you in the next week or so is our communications and escalation guide. Um, that will be part of a, a uh, training pack that we put together, um, but this one's a, going to be a separate document. And this one's your methods of what, you, what to do if you don't know how to do something. So if you need help with something or you need to communicate about something, um, where to go, um, what to do in each situation. So it covers the primary emergencies that you might face um, in the worst case and also the general questions you might face. And that's a really good place to get yourself familiar with early on. Otherwise, I don't have much more to say this evening. Um, I think that gives you a good idea of the roles that we're looking for this year. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come on to some questions, if people have questions. Does anybody have a question? A.V. Dan. What color are the t-shirts? Secret. <laughs> CJ. Um, you know, you said in terms of like blocking out when we don't want to do shifts. Um, like, how much information is available about what's going on like at the festival at the moment? Can we like, use that to figure out when we don't Yeah, work? sure. So is the schedule available again? Um, so yeah, the schedule is available from October 8th um, and it'll be on guidebooks. So we'll probably tweet out about that. So if you follow us at Atmos at a festival or we'll also put it out in the cons as well to let you know how you can download it. But yeah, cool. from October 8th is when you'll be able to see all the sessions. We also won't open that piece, so we won't be assigning shifts until after the schedule. So from when the schedule is released, we'll give you a week. Um, we'll give you a week to block out the sessions you want to go to before we'll allocate any shifts. A V Dan. Um, sorry, I'm being annoying. Um, no, you're not. Can all of the info gurus this year be on Slack? Yes, we'll make sure all of the laptops have got Slack this year. Um, they were not much. I know they were supposed to be. <laughs> we'll make sure that happens. Yep. We have loads more laptops this year as well, so we can give everyone set up properly. Have we got some more questions? Where is lost and found? It always changes. <laughs> can we just have one place this year? <laughs> um, and I'm happy for that to be the help desk, but just one I place. I will let you know. There'll be a desk where you can go and ask where the current lost and found is. Three desks last year. <laughs> um, it'll either be held with Ravensbourne with us. That's just something I need to, because it is still technically a functioning unit, especially like Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Um, just to figure out how that works. But yeah, I'll let you know. Hello. Does lost and so I'm sure lost and found include people? Um, okay, so with people, um, that's an interesting one. So especially children, there are young people around the festival, um, and so we do have an escalation and, and policy for that. Now, we, I'll send that out to you in the document that you get, but it looks like something along the lines of um, make a radio call and Moz Help will arrange for um, somebody to come and give you assistance in that case. Um, there's a process on the back end for it that will that will escalate it to. Yeah, I think the most important thing is like if, if that situation, especially if it's someone who's under 18, if it arises, is just to contact the production team. Uh, we take off your hands and we'll get someone who's security checked, who yeah. um, like is part of the youth generator to go and bring them back and call the crest or the parents if we need to. And Moz Help will be on, on hand to relay those messages. So you'll make a radio call and Moz Help will take over and um, make sure it's escalated to production and whoever needs it. Yeah. Yes, I'll come to you in a second. Um, there's going to be a, a, another meet-up. Yes. Do we know a date for that? Um, I believe we're going to do it on the 17th of October. Yes, yeah. I need to double-check, but it'll be the week of the 15th. It'll be the week of the 15th. Um, we're going to aim for the 17th of October, provided the office and everything else is available. Okay. Um, Jane? Um, is there like a uniform? Are we, are we going to be asked to say where, you know, muted colours like dark, black or dark grey or anything like that? So you can wear whatever you like. Um, while you're on duty, we have a volunteer T-shirt, um, which is why we asked for your T-shirt size. So we'll decide on the colour of those, and um, 
once once that argument is handled, um, we will we'll send we'll, we'll have a t-shirt ready for you when you arrive. And when you're on duty, you'll be expected to wear the t-shirt. While you're off duty, um, no, it's uh, be as vibrant as you like. Yes. Vibrant is better. But you can't not accessorize, so glam up the t-shirt if you would like to. Yes. Where is it? Did you have a question? Oh. Sorry. OK. Any questions? Any more? I guess one other thing from me. Um, so yeah, there's another person in the production team here tonight is Stephanie in the blue just behind the wave. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, she is also across the weekend. She'll be supporting the um, Frontier coordination team as well throughout the process. So like always reach out to the coordinators or like myself or Stephanie and we are always here to answer questions and we will be tonight as well. Okay, I think that's mostly everything. Um, the one thing, oh, Fuzzy. If I'm interested in helping with Mosfest House, who, like, who do I talk to? I was just opening that one. <laughs> okay, so Mosfest House. Um, I haven't spoken much about Mosfest House this evening. Um, the reason being is that we're going to do a slightly separate training session on that. Um, it'll be a digital training session, so you won't be expected to come to the office for that one. Um, now, Mosfest House is across the week, um, so if you've selected that you're going to be available Monday to Friday, we might ask you to help with Mosfest House. Um, the shifting will be very similar, but a little bit different um, because of where it is and because the events aren't public, um, it will probably be that you will do the majority or all of your volunteering with Mosfest House if you opt to do um, a Mosfest House shift. So we might ask you to come and do an afternoon with us or something along those lines. Um, there aren't specific roles for Mosfest House, it is just a Mosfest House volunteer um, and it's a variety of all the roles that you've seen already. So you'll be helping on the welcome desk. When the events start, it can be incredibly busy. Um, and when I mean incredibly busy, I mean security getting annoyed at us because we're blocking the doorways. Um, so it's we're looking to get as many people on hand at the start of events. And then throughout, you might, we might say, you know, um, go and do whatever you like and come back for the next events. Um, but we'll, we'll have a look at what the best way to schedule it is based on the events that we get. And we'll send an, e an email out to those of you available in the week to see how you can help us with MOSFET House. Uh, you mentioned the wiki. The wiki, yes. So we have a wiki page. Um, the link will have been sent to you in the first email we sent you. Um, so it's something along the lines of... Um, it's on the volunteering page on the main site as well. Yeah. Yes, it's also on um, festival, mozillafestival.org slash volunteer. Yeah, and the wiki is wiki.mozilla.org slash mosfest, capital M, small f. <laughs> really annoying. <laughs> <thing there. laughs> yes. Um, so any other questions? And of course, when we finish, we're not just going to say no more questions. We'll get some more drinks and food and stuff, and you're welcome to ask as many questions as you like. But have we got anything else that you want to ask with the group around? Cool. Okay. So thank you everybody for coming tonight. It's great to see all of you here. Um, we're not kicking, kicking you out just yet, so please do help yourself to another drink and some snacks, and we'll um, have a chat with you and see you around in just a moment. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Great to have you both as part of the production team. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Right, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm going to